Uh, the first skill we're going to look at today is our overhand throw and just walking through those different movement phases that we are looking for when we're teaching our kids how to throw here. So when they're in the foundation years, we focus on three main steps. We're looking for a side-on stance as they're before they're beginning their throw. We're looking for an arm behind creating an L shape and pointing towards their target, just so that they're aware of where they're aiming and they have that conscious um, point to aim for. There's two objects that we would use that I'd recommend using when we're teaching our kids how to throw. Either a tennis ball is always a good one or a bean bag if you have one. Bean bags are especially good if your child is finding a tennis ball difficult to grab as they can be smaller and harder to get their hands around and a bit bouncy. So if you have a bean bag at home, Never a bad idea, but for this one, we might use a tennis ball because my assistant here, Henry, is very used to using a tennis ball. He's all over it. Nice. All right, now remember, so we start with our feet together. Okay. All right, so here Henry's in his proper side-on stance. He's got his feet together to begin with. He's pointing towards his target and he's made that nice L shape with his back arm. He's ready to throw, he's in the proper stance, and from here, it's just a matter of going for it. Off you go, Henry, have a throw. Nice one, good job. So following on from Henry's throw there, it's always good to give those kids a bit of verbal feedback at the end. I'm using that consistent language with them, getting them used to that language, such as making sure that they're standing side on, using those words for side on. They, they begin to learn that language at school, and that's the same language that I'll be using in class when I'm teaching them getting them to point to their target and creating that L at the ends. Now Henry did a really nice job of that then, so I think he's, he's done an excellent job there. That was a perfect model, okay? And just following on, keeping that language consistent so that they get the habit of it, trying not to give them too much feedback at a time. If we're giving them too much feedback, they can very quickly become overwhelmed and they lose the main points. So choosing one thing to give feedback on at a time is always valuable when teaching these kids these skills. You. Well done, man.